the plague. Like a pale horseman of the apocalypse, the Black Plague arrived in Europe in October 1347, a fleet of 12 Genoese ships limped into the harbor of Messina in Sicily. They were manned by dying men. Their cargo consisted of dead men. They had come from the Crimea on the Black Sea, and they carried with them the rats, the fleas, the Black Plague. The people of Messina pitied them, ministered to them, and became infected. In the following year, 1348, the bubonic plague spread all across Europe. In France, the plague carried away about one-third of the entire population. In cities like Florence, in Siena, in Tuscany, one out of every two citizens died of the Black Plague. The cause of the disease was a bacillus, which is a rod-shaped bacteria, which lives in the stomach of a flea. The flea, in turn, resides on the hair of a rodent, almost always the black rat. There were rats everywhere in medieval Europe, partly because people, the general populace, and perhaps inspired by the churchmen of the time, believed that the devil resided in cats. Somehow cats and their, their movements made people think, wow, I think they've got the devil. They're probably, uh, he's probably masquerading as a cat or as a bat. So anytime you found a cat in medieval Europe, he was summarily drowned. Uh, which made for a lot of rats, of course. To compound the problem was the fact that there was a total lack of urban sanitation. This is universal to medieval towns and villages. Narrow streets were cesspools of ex excrement, and ordinarily the housewife or the chambermaid would simply take the chamber pot and dump it out the window onto the street below. This is why even to this day, as a courtesy to women, men are expected to walk on the outside and they're walking down the street because they would be the recipients of the chamber pot more likely than women. Everywhere in medieval town, there were dead animals. Nobody ever buried a dead animal. When the animal died, you just walked over it. Outside the butcher shops, there were animal entrails, hoofs, whatever the butcher didn't need, he threw out the, onto the street. There was garbage everywhere, and nobody ever seemed to care about the garbage. Now, admittedly, garbage is always a, an ongoing problem, my hero, Henny Youngman, once told of the wisdom of his brother-in-law. He said, there was a garbage strike in New York City. He said, nobody knew what to do with their garbage. He said, my brother-in-law did. He gift-wrapped it, put a ribbon around it, left it in his car, and every day it got stolen. <laughs> However, one of the reasons for the Black Plague is the fact that people rarely, if ever, bathed in their entire lives. Consider that the shower bath was not incorporated into American homes until 1925. The bathtub was not put in American homes until 1900. People did not bathe. Often the only time a person was ever immersed in water in his or her entire life was at their baptism. So fleas and body lice were, of course, universal afflictions. Everybody from peasants to archbishops had fleas all the time. The knowledge that the disease, the Black Plague, met almost certain death within 24 hours produced profound pessimism in the 14th century. The tragedy was compounded by the fact that there were very few caregivers. Oh, there were men who risked their lives, but it got paid a lot for it, who had wagons and hooks, and they would go around and pick up the dead bodies and put them in the wagon, take them out to some central location and burn them, burn their bones, as they called it, which gives us, they were called bone fires, and eventually gives us the word bonfires. When a child in a household was discovered suffering from the plague, the rest of the family, including the parents, ran. They simply ran to the countryside, left the child to die alone. There was no treatment and no prevention of the Black Plague. Some people thought that perhaps holding sweet-smelling flowers in their noses all the time, which would ward off the noxious odors and vapors might possibly be a remedy for plague. So often people went around with sweet-smelling fragrant flowers. The first symptom of infection was a rose-colored ring on the skin, which produces 
it uh, eventually becomes a blotch. But that kind of rose-colored ring with a dot in the center uh, was the first sign. It produced, it gave us the nursery rhyme, ring around the rosy, pocket full of posies, ashes to ashes, and we'll all fall down. That stems, refers to the Black Plague. The Black Plague began on that day in Messina in Sicily in 1347. It recurred thereafter in Europe sporadically. There was a dreadful epidemic, which I'm sure you were aware of, in London in 1365. Daniel Dayfoe wrote about it in his little text called Journal of the Plague Year. But eventually that plague was stopped because the government, the royal family actually suggested that they burn down the central portion of London. So they gave us the great fire of uh, London in 1665. The plague still erupts today in such ar arcane places as Bombay and Uganda, New Mexico, and recently in New York City. The one thing you should know about the plague is that it, it is treatable, readily treatable, with today's antibiotics.